Episode three of Side Stories of the Untold Protestant Reformation. I'm using the acronym TUPPER to let any new viewers know that these side stories are related to my series entitled The Untold Story of the Protestant Reformation. In this episode, we're going to look at Ulrich Zwingli and the Reformation in Zurich, Switzerland. For those who have been watching this mini-series of side stories, I would like to start this episode out with a biblical quote from Revelation chapter 13, verse 17, which reads, No one could buy or sell anything except one who has been branded with the name of the beast or the number of his name. All right, so just keep that passage in the back of your mind while we discuss Ulrich Zwingli. Oh, and by the way, that passage was read from the New Catholic Bible version. Shout out to Songaholic. Thank you. I'm still learning too. Zwingli was a priest who climbed up through the ranks to attain cathedral canon in Zurich. He's a follower of Luther's. He believes strongly in sola scriptura or Bible alone. He believes that the Bible can interpret itself to anyone who reads it. He's also an avid author like Luther. He's what historians call a civic reformer, which means he strongly believes in there should be no separation of church and state and that the state should have ruling or authority over all moral issues. He believes that the church should be more of a branch of government that is a watchdog over the public and private lives of the citizens. He develops councils or tribunals, which act as spies invading the privacy of the citizens in order to correct or reprimand their immoral behavior. I spoke briefly about the emergence of communism during my series on the Protestant Reformation. Zwingli is another example. John Calvin, later in the 1530s, adopts the exact same beliefs that there needs to be a council continuously watching the personal lives of the citizens. The reason they believe this is because they believe that God will look favorably on the town or the area or the, what they call in Switzerland, the counties are called cantons. If the citizens are drunkards and spending their times in taverns or brothels, God will look unfavorably to that area and the magistrates themselves. It's so easy to see the similarities in this belief and the persecution of the early church. One of the main reasons that the early Christians were persecuted by the pagan Romans is because they thought worship in a singular deity would anger the pagan gods and would bring disaster like floods and famine. That being said, those are the theological reasons given or excuses for civic reformers like Zwingli or Calvin to enforce more strict control on the people. If you watched my series, you probably know I'm not particularly a big fan of theological reasoning behind stealing the Catholic Church property, giving yourself more money, power, and control over the people. I have a hard time believing that this Gestapo council was actually worried about Jed cheating on his wife at the brothel. I believe it's far more plausible to believe that this council was spending far more time at the banks, the guild houses, and with the merchants, seeing how they can get their greedy paws in on the action. Plus, like any communist regime, you wanna be able to watch everything including things like printing, to make sure there's no insurgents scheming against you. Well, like Germany, in 1523, Zwingli and his followers overthrew the bishop and the Catholic Church and seized all their property. Catholicism was outlawed, and the remaining Catholics were either killed or kicked out. 
Over the next couple years, the surrounding towns that remained Catholic started banding together for protection. And the Catholic towns clearly outnumbered Zwingli and his followers. This goes back to one of the points that we were talking about in the series of how popular was the Reformation. Millions of historians want you to believe that it was this wave of popularity and a revolution among the people. Well, it wasn't like that in Switzerland. So much that Zwingli had to go to Germany in order to get help. In 1529, Zwingli goes to the Schmalkaldic League. Now, if you've been watching my series, I've told you that the Schmalkaldic League was the group of princes and dukes in Germany who stole all the Catholic Church property, just like Zwingli did in Switzerland. So naturally, he went to them for military assistance. Unfortunately for him, he was not Lutheran. They were Lutheran, and he was his own version of Protestantism. This meeting in 1529 is called the Colloquy of Marburg. And it is between Zwingli and his followers or, or magistrates and staff and Martin Luther and the Schmalkaldic League. But what it really comes down to is Zwingli and Luther trying to hash out their differences over Eucharist. Luther believes in consubstantiation, which believes that Christ is present in the Eucharist, but the bread and water do not turn into the actual body and blood of Christ. Zwingli doesn't believe in any of that, nor does he believe in the mass at all. Neither men will give in to their firm beliefs over the mass and Eucharist, and Zwingli has to go away empty-handed. When he returns to Zurich, he decides that he's going to go on the offensive. He's going to be the aggressor here, and that's key because this is the very first religious war between Protestants and Catholics started by Zwingli. What he does is he puts up an economic blockade on the surrounding towns and villages of Zurich. He stops all transfer of salt to any Catholic town or village. Salt is a food preservative. What he's trying to do is starve them to death. When that doesn't work, he suits up in a suit of armor and leads the Zurich troops into battle against the Catholics. And they clash outside the village of Kappel. He believes that God is on his side, but he dies that day along with 5,000 of his troops. That day is October 11th, 1531. Our Lady of Guadalupe shows up two months later on December 12th of 1531. I'm hoping some of you remember the Bible verse that I gave in the beginning of this video, which talked about economic blockades. In the next episode, we're going to go even more extreme than Zwingli or Calvin in a story that was not allowed to be discussed with the Protestant Reformation until just the last century. It's been hidden away for 450 years, and that is the story of the Munsters. So until next time, thank you for watching.